In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I color grade this video step by step so you can easily follow along. I will also share some tips for shooting at night. If you want to edit with me, you can download this clip and a few other shots, link in description. For this shoot, I use the Sony A7 IV, the Sony 24-7 G Master Mark II and a Freewell CPL filter to enhance color saturation by cutting reflections from the car. The note tree for my nighttime shots are pretty easy. We have denoiser, Rec 709 conversion LUT, white balance, exposure, S-curve, glow from the left light, glow from the right light here and sharpening. An important note when shooting at night in low light conditions, it's called low light, not no light. So you need some sort of light source to get good shots at night. For example, a nice looking gas station, or in this case, we had these cool white street lights at the side of the road, which were just perfect for our scenery. So scouting for nice locations for nighttime shoots is always a good idea. To get the most possible light into my camera sensor, I shot this at 24 frames per second, 1 over 50 shutter speed, and I set my aperture at 2.8, which is the minimum for this lens. I'm not afraid to bump up my ISO in these nighttime shoots because I know I can easily get rid of noise with the denoise function from DaVinci Resolve, which is pretty powerful. So I'm going to turn off all the notes by selecting them, hitting Command D, so we can start from scratch. This was shot in S-Log3, so I'm gonna start with this note, the Rec. 709 conversion LUT. I go to LUT and I just hit Sony S-Log3 to Rec. 709. If you shoot, for example, in um, Canon or another profile, you can just choose your Rec. 709 conversion. S-Log3. Rec 709. So this brings back some of our contrast, but as we can see, it gives us a rather greenish looking image. We can also see this in our scores because the line here is higher than the other ones. For the scene, I set a custom white balance at the scene itself using this gray uh, camera cover, although you can uh, also just use a simple piece of white paper. So you just go to custom white balance in your camera and you hold this or a white piece of paper uh, in front of your scene where the light is hitting your car or subject. Then you're gonna put this in the middle of the frame and you hit OK. I don't remember the exact white balance here, but that's how I set my white balance there at the scene. To get rid of that greenish look, I'm gonna reset my white balance node. We go to the white balance node and I'm gonna add some magenta to get rid of the green. I'm going to the tint slider and I'm gonna drag to the right to add some magenta. Now you can see in our scene how it will affect this. So what I usually do is I exaggerate, so I go way too far. Now this is way too magenta, right? Then I'm gonna just hover from left to right, then I'm gonna land somewhere in the middle where I feel like that it was looking in real life at the scene. So somewhere around here looks good to me. So that's before and after, so we got rid of the greenish look. Now if I look at the highlights though, especially here in the car, I still feel that the white is kind of off-white. I just want it to be a little bit more bluish. To do this, I'm going to the HDR wheels from the primaries and I'm just gonna slightly add a little bit of blue in the highlights. Just a little bit, not too much. So this is exaggerated. Just want it to be somewhere here looks good. And I do this in the HDR wheels and not in the game because here in the highlights it will uh, target these highlights very specific before and after our white balance changes. Very subtle but necessary. Now let's fix exposure and the S-curve. These two notes go sort of hand in hand for me. Uh, I'm gonna start with an S-curve. I'm gonna reset it. Go to S-curve, curves here. Put a dot here, here and here. I'm gonna drag this one down. This one down a little bit. And this one up for the highlights. Just gonna make a very basic curve. 
Then I'm going to the exposure node. I might come back to the S curve later. So I'm going to reset the exposure node. Select the exposure node. Now I'm going to slightly lower the blacks here. Just a little bit, maybe just minus 0 0.01. Depending on your own style or look, you can just play with the slider as you wish. And I'm going to slightly increase the gain to make the highlights pop a little bit more. Not too much. Somewhere around here. That looks good. And then you can go back to your S curve if you want and see how it looks. But this looks good for me. Just look at how the blacks here really come to life. So this is before and this is after. Just perfect for me. That's a huge difference. Now this is not standard in my node tree. I added these myself. Uh, here we have the glow for the left light and the glow for the right light. So I will just uh, reset both of them. I'm going to start with the right light here. Then I'm going to the window section. I'm going to select this one right here, a circular one. I'm going to adjust the shape to match my lights. Somewhere around here. So this way we only affect the lights with our glow effect and not the whole image, right? Then we are going to the tracker and we are going to track back and forth, clicking this one right here. And now you can see it nicely tracks the backlights. Then I'm going to effects. We are going to select glow and drop it onto the node. Don't worry, it looks washed out. We're going to change the color filter to red to kind of match the colors from the backlights. I'm going to add a little bit of gain here and I'm going to lower the spread. This looks good for me. That's a nice glow. That looks good. Then we are going to select this node, command C to copy, select the left one and command V to paste it. Then we are going to the window and we are just going to move over the window to the other light. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to track it again. And poof, that's it. So that's before and after. This is personal preference if you like it. For me, it looks very nice. Then we are going over to the sharpening node. I'm going to reset it. You go here to the blur section and you're going to drag the radius to about 0 0.47. This is the number that I usually use. And if you zoom in and you turn it off and on, you see the difference here. If you want to get rid of the noise, we have some noise here. Uh, I go to the denoiser tab. Let's reset it completely. Then we go to the motion effects tab right here. I'm going to select for this shot two frames. This means DaVinci will use two frames before your current frame and two uh, frames after your current frame to detect what is noise. I set it to better. I don't want it faster. And motion range is the amount of motion in your shot. So in this case, it's just medium to slow. Actually, I'm going to set it to medium. And usually I set my temporal threshold to about 30, which is for me like the sweet spot. And then you can see the noise before and after. And it smoothens out your noise pretty nicely. Do mind that if you use the noiser, it's pretty taxing on your system when you have it turned on. Unless you have your playback render cache to smart, then it might render it in place. But usually I turn it off by hitting the number here until I'm gonna render my video, then I turn it back on. So let's see now what each specific note does. So I'm gonna turn them all off. We start with the Rec 709, white balance, exposure, S-curve, glow, sharpening, and denoise. If you are happy with the grade of this shot and you want to match other shots to this grade, you can open up your clips here in the color tab. And let's say we want to 
uh, match this clip to this one. I'm going to open this button, have selected clips on. Then I'm going to hit command and this one, and then it will open up both our clips. Now what you can do is you can right click our graded clip, apply grade, and then this clip will have the exact copy of your color grade from this clip. But of course, every shot needs some refining to do because as we can clearly see, this shot is way overexposed. So we select this one, there will be a white box over it. That means everything we change is uh, changing this clip. I'm going to reset my exposure. I'm going to select the exposure. I'm going to lower my highlights here because we can see that it's clipping here clearly. Uh, and I'm going to lower my gain as well. So something about here looks good. Then we still have to change the glow of the light. I'm going to delete one. Then we go to our window and we just have to change the location. And that's exactly how I grade every single shot on its own. So that's before and after your color grade. If you want to learn how I color grade my daytime footage, make sure to check this video.